Say bye, puppy. Ruffy. Ruff, look at the camera. You cannot be camera shy and have a YouTube channel, Ralph. It doesn't work like that. Oh. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. My name is Jade and this is Little Ralph. So for today's video, I thought I would... I don't know if this is gonna go well. Are you gonna sit or not? <laughs> so I've just put Ralph down because he is not having any camera time at all today. I don't know why, as soon as I start talking, he just starts squirming away, but um, I'll try and pick him up again in a little while. But today's video, I thought I would talk to you about how to train your puppy or your dog to be a good passenger in the car. Now, this really surprised me how well Ralph did with this because my last dog was just not too great at riding in the car at all. But then again, I did introduce him quite late as he was an established adult by the time I even put him in this car for the first time. So yeah, if you do have an adult dog who just doesn't like the car and you are looking to try and train them now, you can still definitely do it. It just takes a lot of patience and a lot of consistency in continuing to do the same thing, getting them used to it. And if you have a puppy, then of course there's no better time than now to get them used to the car. So what I thought I would do today is I thought I'd talk to you a little bit about like the training that I use with Ralph and it is super simple. So let me just, Bless you. <laughs> so let me just jump in now. So firstly, if you are starting with an adult dog who is already like very anxious or scared of the car journeys, what I would start by doing is I'd try and turn the car into a positive good thing. So a good way to do that would be to just make little trips to and from the car, maybe a couple times a day. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna walk from the house to the car and when you get to the car you're gonna give them a treat and then back again and just do that a good few times they associate already that that journey to the car isn't a bad thing. Then what you wanna do the next step is you want to actually start going inside the car. So you're not gonna drive anywhere, but you're just gonna take them into the car, sit them down, give them a treat, back again. Take them into the car, sit down, give them a treat, back again, just do that repetitively, just in so that they can then associate that being in the car isn't bad. And then what you wanna do after that is you wanna like try and turn the engine on. So again, you're gonna do the same steps, go to the car, turn the engine on, give them a treat. So basically what you're doing is you're just retraining their mind that actually the car's not all that bad because when I go into the car, I get a treat. So now that you've managed to get your dog kind of like associating the car with a good thing, you can jump right back in where we're gonna start now. The one tip I'd say before starting your journey, if you have got like a scared or an anxious dog of the car, I would try and tire them out. So either with like a nice long walk or a quick little running session, a quick little playing session, anything just to kind of get that bundle of energy out so that when they go in the car, hopefully as your journey starts, they're gonna wanna kind of sit down, tire and rest a little bit so getting rid of any extra energy that you can is a really good starting point so your first few trips you want to make sure are really short sweet and simple trips what I would say is I'd say even if you're just riding around the block or you're riding up the road to like a little green area let them out have a play have a treat and then you get back in the car and go home just so that they're associating the car with like a good thing you don't want to like although I did <laughs> but I didn't have any choice but you don't really want the only time your dog goes into the car is to go to the vet because obviously sometimes dogs don't associate the vet as a very happy place so you don't want like the only car trips to be to the vet and back again then so that they expect every time they get in the car they're going to be going to the vet you want them to think actually i could be going in the car and we could be going for a walk we could be going to visit someone we could be going to have some fun and then we could be going to go to the vet as well so um, yeah you want to make those first few trips really short there and back again and you want to give them something happy to look forward to going into the car so you may find a lot of people recommend you putting your dog in the back of the car either that's in like the boot gated off with the gate or in the back seat you'll find they say this because they think it's safer so that you reduce the risk of like your dog distracting you your dog coming over to you and maybe like you know making you cause an accident things like that so this is personal preference it's not against the law to have your dog in the front seat however what you do need to do is you need to turn the airbag off because if you did get into an accident the force of the airbag would be way too hard for a little dog or even a big dog so it would obviously pose a very big danger to them so you want to deactivate the airbag on the passenger side and you want to move the passenger seat as far back as possible just to give them that much more room now when traveling with your puppy or your dog you want to make sure that they are always belted in right so they're securely seat belted in whether that be with like a little travel bed. What I'll do is I'll pop a picture in here so you know what I'm talking about. You can get these all over. You can get them on eBay, Amazon, stuff like that. That gives your puppy a nice little space to sit in that they can feel nice and snug and secure, but it's also belted into your chair and then you can connect them, connect the belt to their harness. That way they can't move. Um, or you can just use a little doggy seat belt. So like this is what I use. So it's just got like the little seat belt end here. That clicks into the car seat belt and then it's got a little clip here 
and that just hooks onto your pet's harness and you want to keep them belted and secured that way there's no risk of them climbing over to you and causing an accident or there's no way of them actually just moving around in the car and getting themselves trapped somewhere and being injured so it's really important to have them belted in um this is only 1.99 on ebay so what i'll do is i'll leave a link in the description box below to both of those carriers if you want to check them out that'll be in the description box down below so once you've got your puppy belted in you want to make sure they're nice and comfy so whether that be with a little dog bed or whether that be with like some blankets or something make sure they're really comfy for the journey and then you're going to start your drive so once you start your drive if you find that your puppy or your dog is being really vocal either crying or whimpering or barking or anything like that you want to make sure you ignore this behavior like completely ignore it don't even look in the direction you don't want to give them any attention to make them feel that this behavior is a wanted behavior whilst it may seem really hard to ignore a really cute crying little puppy it's the best thing to do because you don't want to give them that attention that will then translate to them as saying oh i know this is a scary experience so i'm going to you know really pamper you i'm going to really tone in and pay you attention because that then shows them that actually there might be something to fear you want to kind of ignore them because you want to show them that we're doing this and there's nothing to be scared of like we're completely fine and we're going on a drive so the key part to showing your dog how they should be behaving is you want to wait for the split second they are quiet and the minute you hear sorry about the sun changing my color the minute you hear the silence from so the minute you hear silence from your dog or your puppy you want to reward them so you quickly give them a treat and you use verbal praise to let them know that actually this is a behavior that we want so they are going to probably return to crying or whimpering because it's only going to be a brief second and once that starts again you're going to completely ignore it and you're going to wait for the next moment of silence so every minute you hear a moment of silence you want to give them a quick reward and tell them good boy or good girl well done like just to let them know that actually this is what i want you to be doing so it may seem like you're feeding them a lot a lot of treats so what i would recommend is i'd recommend cutting their treats up really small that's what i do with ralph i take one treat and i make it into about 10 pieces just because i then know that no matter how much i'm giving him i'm not actually overfeeding him in treats so yeah that i would definitely recommend cutting up your treats the more and more you do that you'll be positively reinforcing that behavior that wanted behavior so the more so what you'll find is the silent breaks will actually start to gradually build up becoming longer and longer and longer once they start becoming longer you no longer need to keep on giving treats 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 what you need to do is then maybe give a treat sometimes but then the next time you hear like a silent break just verbally reward your dog like you don't have to always give treats once you see them getting used to the car getting used to the motion then you can just verbally do it but then also chucking a treat now and again just because you don't want him to completely be like well actually no if you're not giving treats i'm not being good you should hopefully get to a point where you no longer actually need to use treats anymore um i only did this literally for, probably for a few days with ralph and then after that it was just enough for me to verbally let him know that actually everything's okay and yeah i'm really proud of how you're acting so i then just cut out the treats completely and just only use verbal praise now and to be honest i don't even need to use that now he literally gets in the car and as soon as he gets in he lays down and goes to sleep point blank we went for a trip to the beach uh about three days ago and it was a two hour journey and he literally slept the entire way there the entire way back a few little tips i would give is if you are worried about your dog toileting in the car put a puppy pad down underneath them i haven't like i said i just rode two hours with ralph there and back again and he didn't toilet in the car once but if you are worried pop a puppy pad under them keep the windows open as and when you can like not all the way down but just a little bit down just so that they get some fresh air whilst doing the journey keep the nerves down also i would probably try and not feed your dog or your puppy straight before a journey because you don't want to encourage any form of travel sickness it's not nice and that is it like i said consistency will pay off and your dog will be a happy passenger in no time at all so once you've got a very happy content passenger in the front seat with you feel free to try and move them to the back if you need to i don't think you'll need treats for this transaction i do think verbal praise will be enough for that but yeah if you want to move them to the back then you can do that so yeah that is literally a really simple and easy way to help your dog be a happy content passenger i've just woken ralph up to come and end the video with me <laughs> um so yeah i hope you find that useful if you did find that useful do please give us a big thumbs up we would really appreciate it if you're looking forward to any more videos about your keys just tips tricks like recommendations then do please hit that subscribe button i would love to have you stick around let me know in the comment box down below if there's anything you want to see anything you need help with i would be more than happy to help when i can until the next video take care ralph is gonna start wriggling again ralphie look ralph ralphie say hello say hello don't think he's too happy so until the next video thank you so much for watching do please give us a big thumbs up really appreciate it and until the next video take care and we will see you next time bye